Sup guys, I'm back with another update video on the tiny house project. If you haven't seen any of my other videos on the tiny house, I actually have one 15 minute time lapse video of an eight month project that I did with my dad building this tiny house and it's in my YouTube channel. I will leave a card in the upper right corner of the screen here or you can check out the description box down below. I will leave a link to that video. Anyways, this video is gonna be about how I laid this gravel driveway as well as the sandstone edges to make it look a lot better and give the house some personality and curb appeal. If you're new to my channel, I am a handyman. I take on all sorts of projects and this is really just a portfolio of my work. So without further ado, let's get to the actual video. So this is day one. This is the day we dig the form. To dig the form, we had to move the mailbox out of the way because I realized that whenever I put that in, it was way too far up past the sidewalk. Kind of ruins the point of the sidewalk. So I'll move that back. Then we put some metal sticks in the dirt, ran a string line congruent to the side of the sidewalk, and then we spray painted it with orange spray paint. Then after we spray painted it, we went ahead and dug a ditch that was 12 inches wide by six inches deep. Then we did our curve. To do our curve, we measured four feet to each side, measured the center of that, and then we drew our curve as best as we could, and voila, it came out pretty good. There's not really a formula to it, to measuring things that big. You just gotta be really good at art, like I am. I'm joking, that sounded really arrogant. But anyways, I ran another string line. This string line was ran level, and then I put my wooden stakes into the dirt, congruent and level to that string line. Squared away, and it looks pretty good. Then I put my one by six inch board, see that white board that's there, onto those wooden stakes via star head deck screws. Then I went ahead and did the front. As you can see here, it's a perfect right in right angle corner that we are screwing onto. And boom. I forgot to get some pieces of form for that corner there, for the curve, so I just left it alone. But I said, I don't want to waste the day, so we went ahead and dug the ditch on the left side too. Same thing, 12 inches wide by four inches deep. Here in a second, you'll see what I used for my curves. It's actually a green metal yardage. Voila, there it is. See, that's my metal yard edge. It works perfectly for the form because you can bend it and mold it however you want, and you can't do that with one by six inch boards. In the background, you can see me mixing my concrete. I'm using my big mixer. That's actually not mine, it's my dad's. But I'm using my dad's mixer, and I'm putting ready mix in there with water. Then I'm putting it in my wheelbarrow and sh wheelbarrowing it over to the actual site where it is gonna go. As you can see here, I have my rebar in already, and then I'm putting my rock on top of that concrete. So the process is basically like this. You dig a ditch, you build your form, you put rebar in there, you put concrete, and then you put your rock on top of that concrete. Oh yeah, I'm also using my angle grinder. You can see it there being put to use, finally, to make nice straight cut cuts on the edges of the rock so that it fits perfectly in between the form. It came in really handy. If you watch carefully, you can see that the form dropped a little bit. That green area, I did that on purpose. I did that so that if a vehicle ran over the rock, it wouldn't crack it. That way the vehicle can go on top of it and the driver can realize, oh crap, I just ran over the edges. Here you can see me attempt to use a mortar bag. I failed terribly. This is my first time using one. So I used a tiny hand trowel to put the mortar in between the rocks. You can see a bit of a haze, but they do make haze remover. So I'll probably use that to get rid of that haze. Moving all my stuff over, my operation, and I'm laying a moisture. Actually, this is a weed barrier. I'm laying a weed barrier down. The purpose of this is so that weeds don't grow past the gravel. Because if you're anything like me and you've dealt with this type of stuff, you've seen that it's really inconvenient trying to mow weeds that are on gravel. It shoots gravel everywhere and it's annoying. Sometimes you get those little bitty gravel pieces up your nose and it hurts, you know? I don't like that. So put a weed barrier down, thinking of people in the future. Same thing on this side. I put my one by six inch boards as well as my stakes into the dirt and I built my form on this side. And here I'm putting my rebar in and then I started mixing my concrete once again same process I mix my concrete put it into the wheelbarrow wheelbarrow it over to the site pour my concrete into that area and then I put my rock on top of that concrete 
it's really not that hard. The hardest thing is the labor. I mean, you're carrying these big rock. You're carrying these big rocks around. Sorry, you're not supposed to curse on YouTube. You carry these big rocks around. It starts to hurt your lower back. And you also got to be kind of artistic to do this type of stuff. And this isn't something I do on a daily basis. This is just a project I'm doing on my little house. So that's why I'm not too concerned about how it looks. Although I will take any jobs if somebody wants a rock job done. I know a lot of people that can do it. I can subcontract them out. Here in a second, I'm gonna get a call from one of my customers. Just wanna say I have the best hey, customers in the whole world. Oh yeah, no, you're all right, you're all right. Hey, are, are, we, are we still good to go for two o'clock? Yes, yes. Okay, sounds good. I just wanna call you about an hour in advance that we make sure we're on the, on the right you're schedule. You're so business oriented. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ahora sí. I feel like a fucking Mexican. Oh wait, I am. I am. If I was if I was like a Mason, I'd want a cigarette. The nice tan and some sunglasses. Talking about Deborah. There's a group on Facebook. It's called uh, Bad to the Bone Truckers Who Give No it's, it's truckers, like, like guys that drive 18-wheelers. And there's a joke that everyone has a, a wife named Deborah that cheats on him. <laughs> and that's where Deborah comes from. I cheated on Deborah with a lot lizard. <laughs> Fuck. And Bilzerian a heart attack. <laughs> Here I am filling up the gaps with mortar using my hand trowel. Like I said, I'm not really good at using the mortar bag yet. I gotta learn how to mix the ratio better. I'll get better within time. Trust me, I will. I'm also 21 years old. I'm not one of those 50 year, and I'm not a 50 year old Mason who's been doing this for 80 years, you know? I'm not one of those guys. Just as I finished digging my ditch, I got a call from the gravel guy. He told me the gravel was here. So he went ahead and lift it, and it was my duty to go ahead and spread that. As I was doing that, my mom saw me struggling. So she stopped by and helped me out. And you know, I forgot to realize that we actually have a tractor I could have used. My dad showed up, he's like, son, you know I have a tractor, right? I was like, well, shoot. It is what it is. Anyways, that's the end of my voiceover. Go ahead and enjoy the rest of this video. And if you have a project that you need done, make sure you let me know. Feel free to email me at beardoesit at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram. Right now I'm laying the concrete down and gluing the stone onto there. So let me tear up a bag of concrete and mix it. For this project, I'm using bags of ready mix. This is quirk, 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 I can't really say it. High strength concrete mix. For bigger projects, you really want to mix your own concrete. You want to have your sand, your gravel, your aggregate, and the powder, your cement powder. Uh, for the purposes of this small project, I thought it was better to just get ready mix. So here we are. The way I open these bags up is I have a piece of rebar. You lay that piece of rebar down. You put your bag on top and then you stab it, you brutally murder it, pick up and then you just slice, you 
look closely, you can see it's starting to mix. When you, pour it, when you first pour it in, it looks real dry. So you want to spray it down until it's the consistency of something that would be like oatmeal. You stab it to death. You gotta stab it several times. Pick up that piece of rebar and just slice. So now instead of dealing with 80 pounds, you're only dealing with 40. I'm just putting concrete in there.